my lesson. Or, or so I hear, anyway. I mean, I would have to listen. To be able to hear. Well, actually, no, I could... Wait, you can hear without listening. Uh, yeah. Okay, never mind. Let's just move past this. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hopefully, we're all doing fantastically well today. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, hello. Hopefully, we're all doing good. Enjoy moderator position, Valana. If you don't want it, you needn't have it. But I can totally get rid of it, totally not late. Listen. Listen, it's there's a bit there's been a lot going on the last uh the last little while actually, but especially the last couple days, okay? There's been a lot going on. Uh so I reserve the right to not leave my bed until 2 p.m. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's all fine. All's all's okay, not all's great, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good today. I am. There is there is programming. There is work being done. I am. I am having a lot of interesting fun right now. Yes, I am Malcolm Bell. This is Gacha Game Day. Uh, although it's going to be a little bit short. Uh, I think we're actually going to probably go for something like. Why am I frowning? Why am I so frowny? There we go. I think maybe we'll see. Yeah. Why am I so frowny? I shouldn't be this frowny. For any friend. Mm -hmm. Right, hopefully that's a bit less friendly. Right, but yes, catch game. Mad scientist in another sense. Yeah, I. I in all the senses. Oh, mad. Yes. Mm. Wait, no. Mm. Mad scientist. I am a mad scientist. As an angry. No, uh, that's <laughs> something unrelated. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, gacha game. That's what we're here to talk about. Um, progress on the gacha game in the last, well, it has been a week now, hasn't it? I think it has been a week. Progress on the gacha game has been interesting. Very interesting. So last week, for those wanting an update on where we were last week. Last week, we spent a good amount of time working through the design skeleton. We got all of the characters, well, we'd, we'd already gotten all the characters listed out. We knew like lists of what characters were going to be put into each category, which elements they were going to be related to, which, uh, and then how many were going to be showing up at each rarity. Uh, so we got that sorted out before. Last week, what we did is we uh, we actually kind of like divvied up who showed up. No, we divvied up the stats is what we did. We sorted out what stats every character was going to have. At least for the alpha, for the early stages of this, is what we did. So that was really fun. Uh, that was really interesting actually. We went for, oh god, I, how long were we doing it last time? I think it was like six hours. I think it was like a six hour stream doing this. If I'm not mistaken. No, no, that was the Minecraft stream. I think it was four hours. Anyway, good amount of time. Good amount of time was done and a good amount of time was had. Uh, so yeah, we got that all sorted last time. In the meanwhile, uh, since then, I have basically been thinking about a little bit more about the different items that we're gonna have that you're gonna be able to equip the characters with it's gonna be it last programming stream was four hours yeah i thought so i thought so i was getting mixed up with my minecraft building stream i was getting mixed up uh so yeah we uh we got them all started out since then two things we've been working on uh what i'm probably gonna spend a bit more time on today is the stats and thinking about the role that weapons and armor and trinkets are going to have. So like the equipment your character is going to be able to use. Uh, I think that's kind of the now thing that needs to be worked on. Like it's like the glaring empty void in this game's design. And I'm kind of in two minds about which way I want to go with it. I'm not sure if I want it to be like relatively simple statistical bonuses. Or if I want them to be like very abstract. 
that like really change up how a character can interact with the game kind of thing. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure where we want to go with that, but we'll come to that a bit later. Uh, but what I've also done is I've gone back and had a little bit more of a look at how the server works. So there are a couple of changes that I'm going to need to do with the server, specifically to handle the new data types. We're going to have to like actually create a database that contains all of the character stat information that's going to need to be done uh, and i also really 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 need to yeah what something i hope to do for this time would have been to have a system in place for now where would it be yeah i would want a system in place to actually be able to set what a user's party is going to be or like multiple parties like maybe like five parties maybe there's like a choice of five different parties you can have um or like you can like assign five different parties something like that hello kurobachi good to see ya hope they're doing good yeah yeah uh apologies for missing the stream yesterday actually uh something came up that uh that needed some uh some time and attention to deal with but it's all 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 copacetic is good but yeah it's obviously doing good kudo but yeah i had hoped to be able to set like what uh what your teams would be here i'd hope to set that that shouldn't be too difficult I'd, i'm not really worried about doing that but yeah i was hoping to actually have that something i also need to do is um actually be able to like populate the server with the gacha information i think it's normally done here got like the the pools i oh yeah this is something else that i did i also updated the new uh the new gacha pools i got the gacha pools up and running and i'm quite happy with how it worked it ended up being quite concise ended up being very concise um I full screen this i can full screen this good 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 yeah ended up being super concise so uh yeah just for every element you just state which one what which what everything is which is just great um oh wait i did it for eo1 eo2 hmm I think I do need to actually do another loop here. Hold on. And let's have count here. Count. Yeah, little change. Little change. Uh, for count in range. Uh, rather for count in. Oh, there's a bit of a lag going on here. What the hell? There we go. That should now do that right. That's good. We can make a five-man band team. Hero, Lancer, Big Guy, Smart Guy, and Healer slash Heart. Well, I am going to be looking at what kind of archetypes of characters I want to include in the game. Like, that is something that I've started thinking about. We'll come to that shortly. Uh, I've started thinking about what kind of, like, characters or themes I want the characters to have in the game. Uh, rather than just, like, all these placeholder names that are really not that great. Like, they're workable. Like, they're, they're enough to get started on, like, Novice Paladin, Prodigal Pyromancer. You know, they, they get you started. But, uh, yeah, I'm starting to think a little bit more about the characters and the designs of them. Which is going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. But, yeah, so, anyway, uh, regarding the rarities, yeah, I've just got this little generator that will generate... Uh, lists of all the mythics, all of the rares, all of the uncommons and all of the commons for all seven of the elements that are going to be in the game. Which is nice. Which is very nice. Um, and then we set up the new pools. I've simplified the pools quite a bit. It used to be there was like two different uncommon pools, two different common pools. Um... 
but I don't have to do that now, which is quite nice. Uh, wait, I think this is wrong. That is wrong, yeah. We don't need to have those kind of done, do we? No, we don't. Right, that's fine. There we go. Okay. Anyway, doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Yeah, it used to be there was two different common pools. Uh, uncommon pools, rather. There would be like three loads of uh, 39 of them, or rather three loads of 40 on them, plus one extra one. Then one extra one, and then another three lots of I think that was also 40. Uh, so yeah, uh, kind of simplified it. We've just got one pull of the rares, which is just the mythics and two sets of rares. Three sets of commons, uh, three sets of uncommons rather, in the same pool. And then there's five sets of common in the pool. So there's about 60 in each pool, roughly speaking. Um, and then they're just distributed broadly the same way. 10% chance of getting a rare, or mythic, 20% uh, chance of getting an uncommon, 70% chance of getting a common. Uh, I may play around with the gacha system, because like some gacha games guarantee that your 10th roll in a 10 roll is going to be a rare. Some of them say, okay, if you haven't already rolled a rare, then the 10th roll is guaranteed to also be a rare. And I'm not sure which system I want to do. I'll need to think on it. Depends on how quickly I want people running through the gacha. But I can simulate that. I can simulate that, so that's fun. I can figure out what I want to do. Uh, so yeah, gacha system was a big kind of overhaul there, actually implementing the current gacha system right here. See, I called it second attempt. But it works. It works. I like it. Um, and I've also got the collection dict as well. Um, which is just like the list of every single character so that when you've got a new account being made the account just populates to have a list of all of them all of them which is fine so yeah it all just tracks the uh the code number so like me01 for example those are the numbers that gets tracked in the system uh, so yeah, that's that's currently up and running, so that's nice. Uh, also, I think I did this already, I kind of like played around with actually putting all of the... Yeah, I've actually added everything to the system, I did that last time. Uh, I don't think I've done anything else programming since. Yeah, I think most of the programming I've done has just been implementing the new gacha system. Which is... Okay, not very much in the way of programming, but it's still fine. It's still good. Gets us moving in the right direction. Uh, yeah, much more of the work has actually been done this week on thinking about weapons, armor, trinkets, and then how they actually fit into the gacha as well. Because that is something going on, isn't it? Uh, so yeah... So, first thought, obviously we need to actually have a distribution. How do we decide how many pieces of weaponry, armor, and trinkets are going to be assigned to each element? Which is a little bit of a tricky thing to do, <laughs> slightly. Because we've got three different pieces of gear that are going into the gacha. Uh, and they all act, they're all going to act completely different. And I kind of want to use that to kind of create a sense of which each element stands for. So some pieces of weaponry, armor, gear, whatever, are going to be more common for different types of, uh, for different, uh, for different elements. I think that's part of what's going to make the elements different on top of the statistical difference that I've currently got between all the different characters. Uh, so yeah, first of all, it was laying them out. And I didn't actually... What is it? There it is, hold on. Uh, yeah, I didn't actually write this out on paper. Ow. Yeah, or rather, I didn't actually write this out in a spreadsheet. I ended up writing this on paper. Uh, so, let's me just get my little notebook, which I've been using, which has been very helpful. So, uh, yeah, pen and paper. Super, 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 super helpful. So, uh... 
the important thing is that there are as many pieces of equipment for every rarity and for every element as there are characters. So that keeps things relatively simple. So I know exactly how many pieces of equipment there are going to be in the game overall, and that's going to be 64. There are 64 characters, there are going to be 64 pieces of equipment. Uh, and it's going to be spread up between three different kinds. And now there's a question of how I want... Like, how, how many weapons do I want? How many pieces of armor do I want? How many trinkets do I want? What way do I want them kind of balanced with each other? Uh, 64, unfortunately, is not divisible by 3. It's close, but it's not divisible by 3. So I can't just take the lazy option of saying, yeah, uh, they, there's like one of each for every element. Uh, or like the same number of each for every element. But then that's also a problem. Because, uh, yeah, there are seven elements in this game. And 64 is also not divisible by 7. Uh, if it was one less, if I had 63, it would be divisible, divisible by both 3 and 7. So I could have just like, you know, easily divvied them up. But then there's also the problem, light and dark have less than the other 5 elements. So yeah, I really need to figure out how to divvy them up evenly uh, in spite of this. So I started thinking, okay, well we definitely want an equal number of everything, broadly speaking. And I figure to myself, uh, trinkets should be a bit more rare. Trinkets should be rarer than uh, weapons and armor. Weapons and armor should be the most common thing, and then the trinkets should be rare. Uh, is kind of what I'm driving towards. I'm kind of going to go for like a, um, what is it? It's like a kind of a. Wait, how was how it divvied up again? There was a way it was divvied up. Yeah, it was kind of like a 2-2-1 two, two, ratio between them all. So for every two pieces of armor, there are two weapons and there's one trinket, roughly speaking. It's not exact, but it works out pretty well. So uh, ended up figuring out there should be 26 weapons 26 pieces of armor and 12 trinkets. Uh, so that's four weapons per element, four pieces of armor per element, and two trinkets per element. Uh, but then that's just for the standard elements. There would be three pieces of armor for light and dark, three weapons for light and dark, and then one trinket each for light and dark. So. Yeah, the scarcity of the wet of the trinkets makes them valuable, which means they should also be powerful, um, relatively powerful. But like someone who's got like a trinket available at common rank, like you're gonna get that common rank trinket basically everywhere. Uh, so yeah, that, that's an interesting thing. I don't actually have any common trinkets. That's interesting. I've kind of like kind of clustered them. I've clustered them towards the top. Trinkets are like relatively powerful. Trinkets are at least uncommon, uh, is how I've done it. So anyway, uh, that tells me the distribution in terms of, you know, weapons, armor, trinkets. So I've got a little bit of an idea to start with. That's how they're kind of divvied up. But now I need to actually assign them to each element, or rather to assign them to each rarity of each element. So I've got four weapons, four pieces of armor and two trinkets for earth, wood, metal, fire, water. And I've got three weapons, three pieces of armor and one trinket for each of light and dark. But like, how do I now, how do I now assign which rarities they go to? Um, so I thought I'd start off relatively simple. Um, trinkets, I want to be at least uncommon. At the very least, I want them to be uncommon. Um, so I decided to, I came up with like a watt system. <laughs> I called it the watt system for the initials of weapon, armor, and trinket. Uh, so basically, by default, every element should have a watt for commons. You watt exactly, exactly, it's the watt system. So yeah, at common, 
every element gets a one. And when I say every element, I mean each of the five elements. They get a what? Uh, for uncommon, by default, they get a what? And then for rare, they get a what? Uh, which works out pretty well. That gives us eight total. That gives us eight total uses. So that's two at common, three at uncommon, three at rare. Which leaves two. So that's a good base and foundation for everything to be at. Every single element gets wa at common, wat at uncommon, and, well, generally, a wat at rare. And then I can decide, okay, that's a good place to start. But a good way to create an identity for one of these elements, like how they relate to the pieces of equipment, is going to be in which of the types of equipment is available in the mythic slot. Because if you think about it, like, what is, like, the most standout piece of gear you can get? What is the most standout piece of gear that you can possibly get uh, for one element? That's going to, like, define what the element actually is. Uh, so I just started considering that. And I figured, okay, let's try having earth and wood be armor. We'll have metal and fire be weapons. They're broadly kind of like aggressive types. Uh, let's also have dark be a weapon because it's a very aggressive type as we've kind of discussed. And we'll have light and water be trinkets at Mythic. So that kind of like changes the flavor of each of them. Three of them are fairly aggressive, metal, fire, dark. Earth and wood are armor, slightly more defensive. And you've got water and light which use trinkets, which are going to be a bit more esoteric, I think. Uh, which is good. Which leaves one more to be divided up. One more to be divided up. Um, so yeah. Uh, the places where things get divided up is, used, is basically in the rares. Because there needs to be four at rare rarity. So everyone starts with a base of what? Uh, with water? Because there's already, there's already a water trinket at uncommon. Everyone gets an uncommon water uncommon trinket but because it needs its mythic slot to be a trinket there can't be one at rare so instead of being what i've made it wa for water and then there's also two more slots left a, a w and an a so yeah water is wwaa for rare that's I, I i do love that i'm just like babbling about letters and expect people to follow this. This is brilliant. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> yeah, water gets two weapons and two armor at rare. Um, and then for the other elements, they're kind of like copy each other. Earth and wood, because they both have armor at mythic, they get two weapons and armor and a trinket at rare. For metal and fire, because they've got a weapon in mythic, they get one weapon, two armors, and a trinket. W-A-A. Amazingly, I'm following. <laughs> okay, I'm glad this works for more people than just me. Uh, this is brilliant. Uh, light and dark are a little bit different. Uh, because they've only got one slot at common, two at uncommon, three at rare, and they're one at mythic. Uh, that means they can only have either W or A at common. So light gets armor, and dark gets weapon. Light being somewhat a more defensive type. Than dark and dark being more aggressive dark should have more commons uh more weapons available at common they both get one weapon and one armor available at common light gets trinket at mythic dark gets a weapon at mythic that's just you know more theming which leaves light having two rare weapons and one armor which i think is kind of cool so two rare weapons suggests to me they don't have a lot of them but the weapons that they do have are really powerful. And then similarly for Dark, they don't have many sets of armor, but the standout sets of armor that they do have are really strong. Um, so yeah. Uh, and they've also got one trinket as well. They've got their one trinket. One trinket available to Dark, and it's a, it's a rare trinket, whereas Light's uh, method. So yeah, uh, that's kind of the distribution. 
is what I figured out and kind of like the logic behind the distribution of the different kinds of equipment at different rarities. Uh, so yeah, you can see those actually on this sheet being implemented like this. I haven't actually written all this down uh, on spreadsheet, you know, more fill me, but working pen and paper is quite nice. I could just you know, add a couple of entries just where I wanted to. Uh, but yeah, so now we've actually got these implemented for all the rarities. You can see that uh, Uncommon Light has one weapon, two armor. Uh, wait, one weapon, two armor. Is that what I wanted? It should be two weapons, one armor. Well done, Mal. There we go. Now you can have two weapons, one armor. Anyway, uh, I'll have to go through this and just double check that everything's working okay. Ah, uh, but it needs, to be, it needs to be weapon armor. I think it needs to be weapon armor weapon. Because I'm trying to do this thing where everything has... Yeah, where everything kind of like rhymes through a set. We'll see about that. Anyway, so that was honestly a surprisingly big thing. Just figuring out like how the different pieces of gear should be distributed for every single element. Which is good. Which is very good. I think it's a significant step in the right direction. Uh, and then you start thinking about cycles. Now, cycles are a really interesting concept. This is something, again, that I'm borrowing from Magic the Gathering. But rather than being something inherently statistical, it's something that's more thematic kind of thing. So what is a cycle? A cycle is basically a group of cards. It's like a subset of cards within a set and they have a certain relationship with each other. There are two broad kinds of cycles. Uh, there are cycles that operate across different elements. So earth, wood, metal, fire, water, for example, where every single entry or a couple of entries within that list of uh, elements would have like related things to each other. Uh, a common example of this would be how in Magic the Gathering, say, uh, it does spread across each of the colours in Magic the Gathering. But for example, uh, they've got a bunch of one mana cost spells that have like a an effect with a three in it. So they've got like Lightning Bolt that do deals three damage to any creature or player. But, uh, and that's in red. But in green, they've got a one mana spell called Giant Growth, which gives a certain cre gives any creature plus three attack plus three defense or you know that game's equivalent so yeah uh, it's kind of like there's a cycle through that uh, or even just like the basic lands in magic the gathering how every different color has their own land associated with them that's technically a cycle um so i'm thinking about that as well when it comes to the design of this game when it comes to specifically the design of the weapons and armor uh, I made particular note of the fact that, say, at uh, Uncommon, everything should have at least one weapon, one armor, and one trinket. And my current thought and intention is I want the common, not the common, the weapon, armor, and trinket that's available to every color, or element, rather, I want to be related to each other in a similar way. And... I want them to kind of explore the major differences between each of the different elements at that rarity. Uh, that's my kind of idea. And then they'll have like, typically uh, at rare, for example, there'll be like one spare one, one or two spare ones, depending on the element, uh, which allow it to explore a little bit more in depth into the more out there aspects of that element. So. It's not defined in relation to the other elements for balance reasons. This is just like one weird thing that this element has all to itself, ideally. Uh, so yeah, I've got different cycles. So we've got a common cycle. We've got the WA cycle, where every common has one weapon and one armor. We've got an uncommon WAT cycle which spreads across all of the elements aside from water. 
uh, which only has W A. Uh, we've got the rare Watt cycle. Um, oh no, the uncommon Watt cycle is Watt cycle, so that's fine. We've got the rare Watt cycle. That's the one that doesn't include water because uh, that only has W A. Uh, we've also got a couple of vertical cycles. This is the second type of cycle that I'm lifting from Magic the Gathering. Uh, so we've got the com we've got the the horizontal cycles where it's like across different elements or colors. Uh, but there's a vertical cycle as well where it's within one color, but across different rarities. So in Magic the Gathering again, for example. You've got that uh, three damage attack that's available at common, but you could also have like a five damage attack that's available at uncommon, which is more expensive, considerably more expensive. Uh, and then say an attack that does seven damage that's available at rare. So that would be a vertical cycle. So it gets progressively more powerful as the rarities go up. Uh, and I kind of want to consider doing that as well. So I definitely can do uh, cycles with the armor that's available for earth and wood, considering they have armor as their like, considering they have armor as their like primary uh, tool, I might want to have there being a vertical cycle that goes from common, uncommon, rare, all the way to their armor, and their like top armor is just like the best, uh, or. It might be that I want to have a cycle in the Earth weaponry, where their weaponry gets progressively stronger as rarity goes up, but the armor kind of does its own thing. I don't know. This is something I'm going to be thinking about. Maybe they'll have like completely different identities from each other, uh, element-wise as well. Uh, similarly for Metal Fire, they can do that. There's a loose water vertical cycle uh, using its trinkets. Because trinkets are, because trinkets are like the mythic level for water, it's a mythic rarity item, or equipment rather, for water, I kind of want it to be a little bit of an echo. You've got like the massively powerful trinket that's available at mythic. This is something that is just immediately awesome when you look at it, or it has the potential to be awesome when you look at it. Uh, but I want it to have like a little bit of an echo available in the uncommon trinket that water has access to. I want that to kind of relate to the mythic trinket in a way. Not necessarily to the point where you would only ever take the higher rarity trinket, but the higher rarity trinket is just like a much better, not, not necessarily a much better version, but it's, yeah, it's basically a much better version of the, uh, the uncommon trinket available at water. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the idea going on there. There's also a light cycle available with uh, their armor. Um, and also a dark cycle available with their weapons. Because they've got weapons and armor available at common, uncommon, and then at rare for light. But it goes all the way up common, uncommon, mythic. For darks weapons. Uh, so yeah, these are ideas of cycles and these can be used to kind of help with design in a lot of ways because you can like reinforce important themes for the elements in the game. Uh, so as I've currently got it with uh, like the weapons system kind of thing, like the equipment system rather, earth and wood are primarily more defensive types so they should have cycles in their armor perhaps. Or maybe we should counter that by having them have cycles in their weapons. Fire and Metal and Dark being much more aggressive, they should maybe have uh, vertical cycles with their weapons. Or maybe they should have cycles pertaining to their armor. Because they don't, because like, they, they put more effort into like a variety of weapons. So maybe they should have like more similar armor. I don't know, I'll have to think about it, play around with it. Design! Uh, which is very fun. Uh, so yeah, um, it gives you an idea of how the elements relate to each other and also to themselves. Um, really good for like, like making the identity of each different element a bit more unique as well. 
Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was really good to think about. That was really good to think about, just to start preparing these thoughts for design. To kind of like prime the ground, till the soil ready for sowing. Uh, I think is really good. I think it's been really good. Uh, so once I did that, started thinking a little bit about the characters. I've literally only just done a little bit of thinking about the characters. Um, we'll get. I did say we would get onto the characters themselves. I've got some little concepts that are moving in that direction. What's this tab? Oh yeah, I remember this tab. Um, yeah. Okay. 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 I remember this. Don't I? Yes, I think I do. Kind of, maybe? Yes. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, starting to think about characters as well. Literally just like a really low level of thinking about characters. Um, basically, I know for a fact there's going to be 10 characters available for each element. I'd say from Light and Dark, for whom there are going to be 7 characters available. And my current thoughts are, well, I mean, come on, it's a, it's a gacha game. It's broadly a waifu game. <laughs> I think in like the vast majority of characters in this game are going to be waifus, to be honest. But like, you know, let's let's have some male and some variety of characters in there as well. Uh I think in like probably yeah, the majority of the majority are gonna be female, because that, do I need to explain myself really? <laughs> uh but we will have some male characters as well, and I think we'll have some cool male characters as well, and maybe some uh more uh, diverse characters as well. It's current thoughts as well. Um, still very early stages. Everyone loves a waifu. Indeed. Indeed. Um, but yeah, so I've got this set out. I'm going to be able to start thinking about specific characters and where they kind of show up at what rarity. I think it should actually uh, lower this by one. That's a good idea, actually. Let's move this a little. Let's merge these, merge these. Oh crud, I forgot. I do need to lower it by one more. There we go. So merge these, merge these, merge these. And then we're gonna call rarity here. So rarities. So got Two at common, at the most. We've got three at uncommon. There we go. There's four at rare. And then we've got one at mythic. This is what we got. Um, but then there's only really going to be one for light and dark there. So let's just have x is here there's going to be two at uncommon there's going to be three at rare and that's going to be mythic so yeah we can just like rule those ones out immediately but well, that's good uh so yeah there are going to be uh yeah uh 64 different characters and this is gonna be my little template for just like little notes just to like establish who's going to be who get a little bit of a feel for them i have little bits of ideas when it comes to the character's designs but this is mostly accidental uh we'll, we'll come to that in just a moment uh this is just a little thing that i'm noting about some other mechanic stuff this is me playing around with some ideas um looking at yeah, this is just like listing out very clearly here. So it turns out I did actually write them down, yeah. So Earth has four weapons, four arm, four trinkets. Total counts for each one. Yeah, I had this written here, well done Mal. Uh, and then Light and Dark as well. So just clear that those are the ways that are kind of divided up. Uh, this is just thinking about different kind of attack patterns. So single target, random, all targets, random three, everyone on the field. Uh, still, this is basically just like a spitballing stage at this point. We're just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks for the most part on this page. This, I'm thinking about like attack and defense reduction. So like certain attacks, it's like in Pokemon. And I'm, I'm not going to be ashamed of how much I'm ripping off a Pokemon here. Um, but like a, an attack that would like reduce 
someone else's attack stat, for example, I'm thinking it would like be increasing and decreasing by 50% at the most. I do like an increase and decrease of 50%. That seems to be like my, uh, my kind of touchstone for this game. Uh, although we are fast approaching the stage where it'll be possible to do less than zero damage, so I'm going to have to design that in. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, or maybe have some kind of minimum damage system. We'll see. I'm also thinking about subtypes. Sub-elements for uh, different elements as well. So. Uh, you might, like, you've got your, you know, you've got your fire, earth, metal, water, wood characters, but why can't these characters have subtypes associated with them? There's a bit of a relationship that you can have between different, uh, between different elements, and they can create subtypes. Hello, Sid! Welcome to the stream. Good to see ya. We are talking gacha game today. So far, we have covered the minor programming changes that I've done, basically updating the new gacha system to include the new characters, or the new uh, distribution of characters. Uh, and we've had a little look at the weapons, armor, and trinkets, the equipment system, and how I'm going to be filling that out as well. Gacha's the game, who did? Me. Uh, but yeah, also thinking about, uh, yes, yeah, sub types between them. So, for example, uh, I am basing this off of, you know, the the element system I'm deriving from, like, what is it, like, Chinese element system, I believe it is? Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know the word for it. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Don't even know the name of my sources. Uh, but yeah, so I'm thinking there can be, like, sub-relations between the element systems. EVPG has all the friends now he does. Um, so yeah, we've got, uh, for fire and wood, what usually creates a forest fire? Strike of Lightning. Strike of Lightning creates a forest fire. Let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, Strike of Lightning creates a forest fire. So I'm thinking that wood and fire, potentially their characters can have a secondary relationship with lightning. We'll see. There's a damn army in your chat, I know. I mean, if you don't want it, you needn't have it. I'll remove it. I'll do it. Don't think I won't. Uh, fire and earth. Rock. Like, earth, fire, volcano creates rock. Makes sense to me. Earth and metal. We're talking about minerals. Crystals. Crystals. We've got crystals as a type. Metal and water. Um, basically, like, metal. Cold metal. Having water condense on it and form ice. Ice kind of makes sense. Water and wood. What happens if you water a plant? It's going to go into flower kind of thing. So, secondary types. Um, this is not going to be hard and fast. This is basically just going to allow me to have a little bit more thematic diversity between my characters. So, they're not all just, like, all the fire characters are just not going to be folks with, like, fire and fire for hair, you know? There's going to be, like, one of them is lightning themed, for example. Maybe one of the fire people is going to be, like, more rock themed, to be, like, magma. One of the earth people, I don't know, maybe also going to be kind of magma -y. But it opens the possibility for this. Earth and metal can be kind of crystallized. Ice can be a kind of, like, ice forming on metal or water freezing thing. Water and wood it could be a tree in blossom, but also, like, pond lilies for example. So yeah, it gives me a bit more variety for new typings. Uh, and also another mechanic that I'm kind of playing around with, including in the game. Oh wait, well, before, we, before we get to that. Uh, with this as well, uh, Lightning, these will also have different mechanical relations with other typings as well. Um, so yeah, these will these'll have like their own unique mechanics kind of associated with them. Big Wood. Big Wood exactly. Big Wood exactly. Um, but yeah, um, what was it? There was a, there was a thing I was going to say. Yeah, so partially this was kind of derived from wood fire, primarily, because in the Chinese element system, the wood, interestingly enough, is kind of named for storms, kind of thing. Storms are very much associated in the imagery with wood, is my understanding. 
So like uh, you've got like thunder and storms kind of thing. Um, which kind of ties into lightning. But then fire also has lightning imagery. So that's kind of why I've kind of tied these two together. Uh, and then I've just kind of rolled from there. Fire and earth, volcano, creates rock, earth and metal, you've got crystal, minerals, metal, water, ice, water, wood, flower. It's basically my thinking behind it. And it's flowed out quite nice and it gives me some variety. Anyway, other mechanic that I'm wanting to implement as well, flyers. Because wooded drums equals thunder at that as well. That as well, yeah. So yeah, flyers. Flyers in Magic the Gathering is a really foundational mechanic, basically. It is like a really important keyword in the game that basically says if you have flying, you can only be attacked by something that has flying. Uh, but you're allowed to block against things that don't have flying, which is really good. Uh, if you don't think there are enough combination, you could also make the order count primary elements with subtle influence from secondary elements, so wood and water different from water and wood. Potentially. Potentially. Uh, I don't think we're going to do like dual types the way that Pokemon does. I think things still very much will just have one typing, but they'll maybe have these as like a sub-typing, is what I think. Uh, but yeah, that is a good idea. That is a good idea. Having uh, a, like a primary and secondary type. That's kind of what I'm going for with this. This would be like fire have a flavouring of wood, or wood having a flavouring of fire, kind of thing. But yeah, good idea, Seth. Similar kind of direction, I think. But yes, flyers, 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 flyers. Flyers are huge in Magic the Gathering. I originally, maybe on 12 DLCs. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I am still very much designing this with just one print run in mind, but there may be like a 2.0 where I basically take the current design and then generalize it to be a bit more flexible, to allow for infinite number of updates, I don't know. But flyers, huge in Magic the Gathering, massively important mechanic. Uh, all, yeah, I'm pretty sure all types do have some access to flyers. Like, it's not the most common for all types. Like, um, it's fairly rare. For green, for example, but you still can get some flyers, like Birds of Paradise, for example. Uh, angels and birds are pretty common for white. For blue, you've got dragons and like seabirds and stuff. For flying, you've got, well, winged horrors for the most part, some bats. Uh, for red, you've got, again, dragons. And for green, yeah, yeah, you've got some big birds sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's pretty important. But the problem is, because I'm really limited, I don't want to have... I don't really want to have flyers be too important, and also I don't want them to be too powerful in this game. That would be a big no-no. I do not want flyers to be too powerful, because otherwise the entire meta game will revolve entirely around flyers, and that's not really what I want, ideally. Uh, so I've decided to kind of nerf flyers compared to Magic the Gathering. So, I, and also this is not Magic the Gathering that I'm making, but I still want flyers to do a thing. So flyers can opt to fly. You can have flyers that are flying and you can have flyers that are grounded. So when they're flying, they're immune to physical attacks from non-flyers. There's going to be a special physical split between the attacks in this game, I believe. Um, or they can land which allows them to attack ground enemies. So they can't attack ground enemies unless they come down to the ground. Um, they have to like transform between these two modes, which I think is going to make them kind of mechanically tricky to play with. Uh, it'll definitely make it hard for me to uh, like program an AI that'll be able to use them pro properly. But you never know. But yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit of a... I'm starting to get a little bit of a feel that I want like transformation of stance to be a little bit more of a thing with this. And we'll come to that again shortly when we talk about the abilities that I'm wanting to put into different characters. So flyers is going to be a very early form of transformation that you can do. You can transform between an aerial pose where you can only attack other aerial enemies or you can avoid damage entirely but give up the ability to actually do damage. Uh, or you can land, which exposes you to attack from grounded enemies, but allows you to attack them in turn. Um, 
my expectation is that you would be able to convert between flying and grounded once per turn and you can do it either before or after you attack so you can have like someone on the ground they make their attack and then they fly to avoid damage until their next turn um or they can be flying land deal damage but then they're exposed to damage until the next turn so it kind of like works on a little cycle like that where a flyer is only available to be hit every other turn kind of thing for them because again they have their own set speed um there will still be ranged attacks in the game ranged attacks will still have a at the very least have a chance to hit flyers uh even when they are flying and certain physical attacks will still be able to hit fly uh flyers as well uh i'm thinking like pokemon the way that uh ice moves are super effective against flyers uh, lightning moves are super effective against fires, which again ties back in here. Uh, ice being super effective against flyers. Rock also super effective against flyers uh, in Pokemon. Uh, reference to the old, uh, you know, the old line about getting two birds with one stone. So yeah, flying might be a powerful trick for a support character who wants their support character to dodge damage. Yes, yes, that can be one good use right there. Uh, so that's going to be really fun. Uh, so yeah, Flyers, not invincible. Every type will still, every element will still have a way to counter another Flyer, either by fielding a Flyer of their own, or usually one of their own characters will have some kind of a counter to a Flyer, or the Flyer's going to have to come down eventually. One of these things is going to be true. Uh, so flyers will be powerful, but they will not be meta-defining, or at least that's not my intention. Uh, I'm also thinking about critical hits. I've, I've been debating whether I want to have critical hits in the game, because when I have programmed this already, like the auto-battler system, I do want the battles to be deterministic. I do want the same results to be brought from every single battle, and having a degree of randomness in that can make things a little bit difficult, especially when it comes to testing. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll have like a crit counter where every time an attack is done, the crit meter builds and then a crit is like guaranteed to go off after a certain number of hits under a certain set of circumstances. Uh, or maybe I will just say, okay, every time there's a battle, there's a random seed that is used for the random generator and then everything just runs off of the same seed basically i've not decided yet but i'm playing around with the concept of crits because crits can be really valuable they can be a good catch-up mechanic uh they can add a lot of complexity and randomness to the game which can make it stay interesting even when there's a defined meta game even when you know this combination of characters are still the best there can still be edge cases where a lucky crit can get an opposing team to win. Uh, so I'm playing around with the idea of crits. We're playing around with that. Anyway, this is really just my thinking about game mechanics page. Um, a lot of good stuff being done here, I think. I really like the secondary types. I like the way that they tie into flyers as well. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, on to abilities. Now, I have said... I am uh, ripping this basically whole cloth from Pokemon. <laughs> I am basically ripping this whole cloth from Pokemon uh, and I'm not ashamed about this. I don't know if um, I'll include flying as an ability or if it's like a separate thing. These, I basically like went online, I found a list of like the 50 most powerful Pokemon abilities and I wrote them down. And they might be a little bit too powerful, especially for the commons. So this is something that I'm still going to have to think about. But for now, I've gone through them and I've assigned whether I think they would be mythic rarity, whether they'd be rare, uh, whether they'd be uncommon. And these are starting to give me some very useful ideas for characters. Um, like, it, it's like giving me a lot of ideas for the character's designs specifically, uh, which also actually ties, well, I mean, you know, it's Pokemon, so a lot of the typing kind of do cross over with Pokemon quite a bit, 
um, these secondary typings I mean, lightning, rock, crystal, ice, flower, uh, you know, electric types, rock types, crystals, kind of like a weird mix of rock and ice, but it's also kind of its own thing. And then flowers, basically grass type, but then wood was also kind of grass type, but like flowers, like even more grass type, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so gives me some ideas and also gives me a starting place from where to work with when it comes to assigning abilities in this game. I'm still playing around with the idea of whether I want these abilities to be innate to the characters or whether I want them to be assignable through weapons, armor, or trinkets. I've not entirely decided it might be a combination of both. My major problem is if I give one ability to every piece of gear, then suddenly every piece of gear is going to have like its own set of rules. That's going to be three pieces of rules that are associated with every fully equipped character. And then the character themselves is going to have a rule of their own as well. And then you can see that this starts getting very complex very quickly. It starts getting really difficult to balance. It starts getting really difficult to think about. It's part of the fun, but at the same time, it adds a lot of complexity. So I'm not sure if I want characters to have their own traits that are innate to them, or if I want there to be like items that are associated specifically with that character that just buffs them a little bit. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on this, but this does give me some really useful ideas when I'm thinking about what I want the characters to behave like, how I want them to interact mechanically, what I want them to be able to do. Maybe uncommons and commons don't have abilities. That could be a thing. It could be a thing. Um, rare, rare, like the rare stage is where you want a lot of the mechanical complexity. Because like if you're just starting out playing the game, if you've done like your one free 10 roll at start or whatever, you're gonna have a couple of like uh, guaranteed roles kind of thing. Maybe you'll have like a couple of assigned characters that the game just gives you a couple of commons uh, and they're like, you know, like the main characters in the story or whatever. Uh, and you can, can like upgrade them later. Um, but yeah, roundabout rare is where you want the vast majority of the mechanical complexity. Because like you're only going to get like one or two rares out of a 10 roll. In my system and that's a lot easier to digest when you're looking at it. You're like right okay I've, I've never played this game before I've done a 10 roll there's all these characters they've all got their stats they seem like they could be useful for a different thing but ooh, there's this character now this character like okay let's take a weird example um, so some of the interesting ideas that I was looking at was things like where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Around here somewhere. Um, where are you? Like Sandstream, for example. Uh, Pokemon ability that uh, creates basically a big sandstorm. It can be resisted by earth types, metal types. Um, but otherwise, it would cause an amount of tick damage every turn for a certain number of turns. Um, which could be interesting. Uh, still need to figure out exactly like if, if weather effects like this are going to be used. Is it something that comes in on a timer? Is it something that only activates at the start of a battle? What happens if multiple characters both have weapon attacks in the same fight? Do they both activate? Does one negate the other? Is like one's ability effectively countered just because the other's ability like triggers directly after the other one? I don't know. I don't know, I haven't thought about it yet. This, well, I've, I mean, I've thought about it, but I haven't decided yet. Uh, but yeah, if you've got a character like this, who's doing Sandstream, and then you're like, oh, right, but it's resisted by earth and metal types. Well, what if I just have this character and then a bunch of earth and metal element characters in my team? So, like, none of my team is taking this tech damage, and if my opponent has any characters that aren't earth or metal, that's like a 60% chance. Okay, a bit more than 60% chance. But uh, yeah, uh, significant chance that a significant portion of the opposing team is going to be taking tick damage, which you could build your team around. 
Um, but yeah, this is still very much the early stages. I've not decided that these are definitely going to make it in. I've not decided whether they're going to be appearing at all rarities. Um, maybe like some characters, like common and rare, or common and uncommon rather, would have some abilities. Uh, or maybe the abilities that common rarity would have to be granted by a piece of equipment kind of thing. I think that's a good idea, Sid, having uncommons and commons generally not having abilities, or if they do, having them be like the most low power ones. Um, but yeah, if we're talking mechanically, or no, if we're, we're, that's just talking a couple of examples for design. Um, these are mostly here for inspiration rather than saying this is definitely what I want to do. Uh, but if we're talking design, for example, uh, there's this ability Comatose, which is in Pokemon, it's given to a very sleepy koala Pokemon. It's adorable. Uh, it's always counted as being asleep, which means it can always use sleep talk, but then it can also be countered by Nightmare or Dream Eater. Um, but then because it's always asleep, it gets certain benefits from being asleep. It can use certain attacks, it can use uh, stuff like that. Uh, which just gives me an idea for a sleepy Umphi character. Like just, like, I don't know, maybe maybe in water typing or something like that. He's just like, you know, wrapped up in a big comfy blanket or something like that. I think that could be really cute. Uh, so yeah, just another idea. But then that also makes me think about status conditions. I mean, status conditions are something that I've kind of played around with the idea of having in the game, but I'm not at the stage where I've actually implemented them yet and have figured out even how to go about playtesting that. Um, but like, it starts getting me thinking in that direction. There's another really interesting one. Where is it? Um, where is it? It's Merciless. Yeah, automatically crits if opponent is poisoned. I believe this starts on Marini. It's like this uh, sea urchin type Pokemon. I think it's poison water. Automatically crits if the opponent is poisoned. You can just imagine how vicious that would be on a character. But theoretically, that could go on a common character. Like, it'd probably be best to put it on a common character. I've been playing around with the idea of having that on the uh, common dark character, who in playtesting I've been calling Void Assassin has just been the idea that's kind of associated with them. But uh, yeah, if they're merciless, if they crit when the opponent's poisoned, like they might not be able to poison by themselves. Maybe one of their attacks could poison, but if they need to team up with a poisoner, yeah, the, the, these are powerful attacks. I'm starting with powerful attacks because I want to think about powerful attacks. Um, but yeah, if, um, if they have to team up with a poisoner, and say poison only becomes available at uh, like, uh, what would it be? Like uncommon rarity or something like that. Then you're starting thinking about team composition in an interesting way. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Just having this information here gives me a starting place. It's like where I started uh, before when I did my very first combat system where I literally just had attack, HP, and speed, or initiative. And I was just like playing around with that on Tabletop Simulator. It gave me something to work with. I could start getting a feel for balance. I could start getting a feel for the power level of the characters. Um, so yeah, I'm starting to play around with these ideas and I'll be able to get a little bit of a feel for uh, game balance. There are also some really powerful things, like these would have to be on Mythic. Dark Aura boosts both teams' dark moves in battle by 33%. It's just absolutely huge. Like, you build your team around that, you give your, like, even your, your team members who aren't dark, maybe you can give them weapons that allow them to use a dark move. They're not dark type themselves, but you can give them a dark move which just makes them even more powerful. Uh, similar for Fairy, which I'm like just equating with uh, Light in my system. Uh, there was another one as well. Yeah, there's moves here as well, which like change 
the attacks type, so change normal moves to electric moves and boosts their effectiveness by 20%. Or changes normal to flying, normal to ice, normal to fairy. I'm using these as kind of like an idea as well. These are probably going to go on equipment, which can just change the type of attack. So I would like change... I'm, I'm currently thinking about having two different attacks available for characters. I'm thinking of having a common... not a common attack. I think of having a normal attack which doesn't do any elemental damage um, but might be a little bit weaker and then having the main attack which is themed to them but is maybe a little bit stronger. I'm not entirely sure about that. The vast majority of cases you would just default to doing uh, your themed attack type but having the normal attack be changeable and especially if I actually do okay certain kinds of attacks have like like something that was suggested I think it was I don't know if it was said actually someone suggested that during the uh the uh what's it called the survey um that certain attacks should like be more likely to crit against certain opponents kind of thing so you can imagine like fire having an increased crit rate versus wood types for example um so but then a wood type or but then a fire type might have a decreased crit chance against a water type so it might make sense for them to use their weaker normal attack against a water type because the normal type still has a relatively higher chance to do crit damage um something like that but then you could use a certain weapon that gives the fire type uh, access to electric damage, which then would be able to do increased damage to a water type. And also boosts that normal attack by 20% as well. I don't remember everything I said, there were many words. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, so that, that would be like one example for how to use these. Uh, it would be very, very case dependent. It would require a lot of playtesting. It would require a lot of figuring out uh, what the relative levels of attacks are and whether a 20% boost would be worth it or whether it would just be too powerful and you would just have these on everything. Lots of playtesting needs to happen in a lot of ways for this to actually work. At this point, I'm basically making a full JRPG system and I'm slightly terrified, but... We do have 20 plus years of Pokemon to look back on. We've got 20 plus years of um, Final Fantasy. I'm pretty sure we've got over 30 years of Final Fantasy, actually. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot of really interesting and useful resources to fall back on. But yeah, yeah, lots going on. Oh, there's also this move Parental Bond, which you get on Mega Kangaskhan in Pokemon, which makes your offensive tax hit a second time for 25% damage. And this just needs to go on an Ara Ara type, doesn't it? Uh, it kind of needs to go on an Ara Ara type. So yeah, I just wrote Ara Ara for, for the uh, the character concept here. I might recommend breaking these down to categories of abilities, maybe test them in the system one set at a time. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps, that kind of thing. There's a bunch of different abilities that like increase attack damage, super effective damage, that increase, um, that like decrease damage from physical, but doubles specifically fire damage. Fluffy's, Fluffy's really cool. You get it on like Wooloo in Pokemon. So halves physical damage, but doubles fire damage. But then that also relates to another ability, uh, which is this one here, Fur Coat doubles defense against physical attacks so it's basically the same as fluffy but it doesn't come with the fire weakness which if you were paying attention earlier on should have you thinking about cycles so you could have fluffy be like a common ability for example or like it would be like a, like i don't know fur armor or something like so it halves physical damage attacks, or maybe not halves, but whatever, uh, but doubles fire damage. Some kind of increase like that. It'd probably be like, um, 
don't know, maybe half or double or maybe 20% less, 25% less physical damage, but 50% uh, more fire damage, something like that. Um, and that could be on like a common or uncommon character. But then you go to Fur Coat, which drops the fire weakness, and that would be available at like uncommon or rare, for example. Um, and then there's abilities, so yeah, and so that kind of thing, that kind of thing. Or, what is it, there's another interesting one that affects, yeah, things like Intimidate is like quite a common ability in Pokemon, which reduces all your opponent's attack by one stage. So it'd be like a 10% reduction in attack damage. Um, but because it attacks multiple opponents, that makes it very, very complex. So while it's available on like, you know, Puchiena, for example, like one of the first uh, dark types you run into in third gen, this is really powerful in this system, especially when it's a 5v5 battle. So something like that you might want as like a really, really rare uncommon or more likely a rare rarities kind of thing. Um, then there's things like Levitate, Immunity to Ground Attacks, it's like Flying Light, uh, which just gives you like specific resistances without giving you full flying. So you could just imagine having like a levitating type character, that kind of thing. Uh, speed Boost, Speed Boost is interesting, increases speed every turn. So eventually you, st you start with like maybe a decently fast character, but then their speed just gets faster and faster and faster and they are just hitting so many times you can barely even handle it. So do you like try to reduce their speed? Do you uh, do you try and focus them down before they can get too many hits in? Or do you risk it? Because like I'd imagine a relatively high speed character, the way that speed works in this system, the higher your sp uh, speed is, the lower your attack is. So you're attacking more frequently but you're doing less damage. And considering there's a defense system in this game as well, a significantly reduced attack stat, even if you're attacking more frequently, means you're doing like lower and lower damage. This just increases speed, which would not proportionally decrease attack, but even so, you're making a large number of small chips with your attacks. Uh, and they would mount up very quickly, so that could be very interesting on a very low speed, uh, on a very low attack but high speed character. Which is weird because then we come to a little bit of a problem with my designs where, uh, yeah, I could only really put it on someone who's rare or lower because rare is the lowest rarity where you start getting like really low speed kind of thing. Um, Where's, where's speed? Yeah, it's rate, isn't it? Yeah. Um, DPS is the same across the board, but speed is low. So yeah. Um, oh no, you can put it on high speed. Yeah, you can put it on a... No, high attack, low speed, low speed, high attack. Yeah. So we need to go on like this character, for example, who's got a really low attack, but proportionally they are attacking more frequently. Which is interesting and a bit odd actually considering that fire was supposed to be my speedy group but they're actually like the heavy hitting group yeah that's interesting that's very interesting i may have to play around with this a little bit more you uh there are raider effects in the game per hit that might be a good op mix opening mix oh, yeah that kind of thing uh you could just say that speed just gives you an extra attack each round mm. uh it kind of does in practice. The way that I'm doing it is kind of like... Uh, it's like a modified initiative system where there's like a counter that counts up and then when it counts up to your speed value, you get to attack. So, like, say you've got a speed of 20 but your opponent's got a speed of 30. The counter starts at 0, gets to 20, you get to make your attack and then you need to wait another 20 turns till your next hit. But your opponent's still waiting another 10 before they can have their attack. So they attack on 30, but you're about to attack again on 40, and then you and them both attack when the counter gets to 60. 
Um, that's kind of the system that I'm going for here. So when your speed goes up, thank you for the hydrate, Kuro. And the posture check, I do currently have both my legs curled up on the seat. So yeah, let's sort my posture. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, where was I? Uh, yeah, so if you increase the speed, you're doing the same amount of damage, you're just getting faster when you do it. Uh, but that could work, actually. You could have like a really heavy hitter who hits infrequently. Uh, but they, but because their stat is already pretty low, their speed stat, effectively. Um, hmm. Actually, that might make a big difference. Ooh, that might make a big difference, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play around with balance quite a bit. I think, because currently the attack rate is relatively low like there's like low variety between them like uh the lowest you can possibly get your attack rate is where is it the lowest your attack rate can go is 24 but the highest your attack rate can go is 36 So that's a, it is a 50% increase, but it might be a bit much. I don't know. Maybe it needs to be like 50% of the change, but then it's like really small increases. Yeah, yeah. 24 to 36. Maybe it could increase to like 30. So you add 50% of the difference, so it's like you add 25%. Yeah, adding 25% onto, or like a maximum of 25% onto speed could be not bad. So you add like another 5% onto each, so it's like basically another one point, which is enough to get you faster than what was previously the next highest tier. That could work. You know what, I'm going to make a note of that. Uh, where is that? That's in this. Nope, that's in equipment. Stages. Uh, for speed, we want 1 1.25, 1.20, 1.15, 1.15, 1.05, 1, 0.95, 0.9, 0.85, 0.875. Yeah. So that would be how we handle speed, because speed's variance is a lot lower. Uh, that might work. That might work. Actually, I might want to use it for more. Rather than having it be quite as wide as that. Yeah. So I want to like add 10 onto both numerator and denominator there to get more. Okay, that's very interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. Let's try equals... Oh, not, not that. Equals u plus 10. And we spread that to the next one. And then all the ones underneath. Uh, why did you go to 10? Oh, right. You don't need to be there, that's fine. Then equals that over that. There we go. That's how the calculation would be done. Lovely. Also, why is it so long? It needs to be so long. Pulled over from when my uh, abilities page was also over here. That's fun. Be a little bit more space. There we go. Yep, so that is one-to-one -one what we want over there. That is good. So, numerator, denominator, and stat change. That could work. We might want to do that instead of that, because that might be a bit too generous with certain stats. Uh, I'm thinking with the defense as well. Yeah, 
because that's then a variance of 50% rather than a plus or minus 50%. So that's a bit better. Yeah, I think I like that a lot better. I think I'm more likely to go with uh, with this rather than this. So let's leave a little note. Uh, variance of 50% rather than uh, plus minus 50%. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, that was useful. That was very useful. Uh, what were we talking about just now? Oh yeah, we were talking about the um, the increases to stats. Yeah. But yeah, very interesting ideas going on here. I think. I think so. I've got this one masochist defender. Like when I saw this stamina ability, raise defense when hit. Like, the, the thought that came into my mind immediately was just darkness from Konosuba. That's just immediately my idea right there. Uh, so we, we may need an XP of darkness in this game. Um, there's other ability, Disguise. Protect against the first hit every battle. That could be pretty useful. That could be very useful. It basically just gives you an extra chunk of HP. I quite like that one. I like that one from Mimikyu. Very good. Rough Skin's an interesting one. So when you deal damage to this character, you then take damage in response. And I'm not sure if I would want that with having like spikes on the armor or if they're just that good at countering attacks. Uh, I can imagine that being very, very good on like a, uh, maybe a metal type or maybe an earth type because earth has a lot of HP but low attack, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. Mal, you do have a dark card called My Old Friend, right? Wait, do I? Do I? I don't know if I do. There's a reference here. Um, oh, hello, hello, darkness, my old friend. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I get it. I get it. Yeah, no. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Good one said. Yeah, that was actually a good one. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is really interesting. I think, yeah, limiting stat bonuses, like, 25% is good. I did like this one. This one was really fun. Um, where's it gone? Uh, here we go. Power Construct is just, like, the super tank. So, when your HP goes below 50%, you get, like, an extra 50% HP, basically. Something like that. Just makes you a ridiculous tank. That would have to be at rare difficulty or something like that. Um, there's these really cool ones as well, the surges, which just gives you all kinds of really cool effects or like terrain effects. Um, for five turns, protects grounded characters from status conditions, halves dragon attack power. Eh, we don't have dragons in this. That may be, I don't know, crystal or something, let's see. Grassy Surge for five turns restores HP every turn and powers grass moves by 50%. Uh, Psychic Surge for five turns prevents high priority moves and increases psychic attack power by 50%. That probably be, that would probably be Crystal. Psychic and Crystal I'm kind of relating to each other. Very new agey. Uh, electric Surge for five turns prevents sleep and increases electric attacks by 50%. Not bad. Interesting. Would you like me to send you a curated list of Arknight's talents, passive abilities after the stream? Yes, please, TV. That would be very useful. Uh, oh, speaking of after the stream. Oh, shit. Speaking of after the stream. Hold on. Uh, this is Friday. Shoot. Uh, yeah, I think I need to wrap up the stream, actually, because uh, I have a movie to go to. Uh, it's in like an hour and a half. Uh, and I've not even eaten today, so... Anyway, anyway, uh, we've covered all the important notes about the gacha game. We have covered uh, a lot of the developments in design. This has primarily been a design update in this stream. Uh, mostly talking about, uh, yeah, changes to the new gacha system. And then thinking about a little bit about different character designs thinking about character abilities, whether those abilities should be placed on weapons, armor, and trinkets, and also how different elements relate to weapons, armor, and trinkets. TV, thank you so much for the bets. 
<laughs> Very generous of you. Thank you so much, TV. I appreciate it. What movie? Oh, it's it's uh it's movie it's movie week, actually. And meeting in five still needs to turn on PC. But yes, uh, massive thank you, TV. Do appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's Scotland Loves Anime Week for me in Glasgow. Uh, so I'm at Scotland Loves Anime this week. Uh, it's like you know, ten plus anime movies all weekend. It's great. There's also a new Yuri one that just got added to the lineup, and that's the one that I'm going to be seeing in an hour and a half. Uh, but yes, no, I, I I do need to run. I need to get food. I still need to, yeah, I still need to get ready and go. So, uh, yeah, massive thank you everyone for coming along today. I massively, massively appreciate it. Hopefully you have found this interesting. Hopefully you're looking forward to seeing more updates on the Gacha game. I don't know when I'm going to have time to do it. Yeah, it's uh, Vampire in the Garden is what I'm going to be watching, is the Yuri movie. It's uh, the compilation of the Netflix show. Uh, but yeah, so talking a lot about design. Hopefully you're looking forward to learning more. Oh, 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 for those who are interested as well. Uh, hold on. Uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Um, bah, 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 newsletter. Yeah, the new Amber Glow newsletter has came out. There is a link uh, in the announcement channel on Chelsea's Discord. Um, so yeah, go check that. A little feature was done on me. Uh, like, if, if you're already watching these, like, you're not gonna learn anything that you haven't already. But it's cool! I'm in a magazine, basically. <laughs> and yeah, there's just some, uh, some fun news and updates and stuff on, uh, Amber Glow in general there as well. So definitely do check it out if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, again, massive thank you, Evan, for coming along today. I will see you all on... Monday? Monday? Monday, Tuesday, I think. So you took over Chelsea's Discord, kind of. Uh, I'll see you like Monday, Tuesday. I, I don't know, I'll make my schedule soon. I'll see you probably next week. There's not gonna be any streams over the weekend. Um, so I'll see you next week and we'll get back to hopefully a bit more regular stuff. Uh, but I'm gonna enjoy my weekend. Take care of yourselves, be very good to yourselves. I will be myself and I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh, bye, 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 bye. Ah, uh, bye-bye. Man, I love this. I, I, I love making this game. It is so much fun. It really is. Right, uh, do we have any raids? Do we have any raids? But yeah, oh god, I've gotta, I've gotta run. I've gotta run! Uh... Carnelia has just gone live. Let's do Carnelia. Uh, yeah, there we are. Who's playing some Genshin? So, you know, if you haven't had enough of gacha games today, uh, Carnelia will be uh, exactly what you want to do and see there. I, I've, I've been meaning to play Genshin. I still, I still need to make the time to play Genshin. Anyway, take it easy, y'all. Matane.